Did you think we were done talking about Cathay Lore? We are not. And we're even going to talk about it again tomorrow. I've got a video coming out covering the Games Workshop article that I think gives us some hints at who the other possible children could be of the Celestial Dragon Emperor. Also, I'm going to be doing a lore Q&A stream in a couple hours, so you can tune into that if you so wish. We'll just be going through a bunch of lore questions and answering and having some fun. Today, we're going to be talking about Miao Ying. Miao, she's one of the new characters that's going to be coming with Total War Warhammer 3 and Cathay. Miao, she looks like a character that is going to be uh, very different from her sibling, and it's pretty interesting the way that uh, they've kind of discussed her I guess lore dynamic, it seems that the dragons of Cathay are quite strong. They're really on par, if not stronger than star dragons from the High Elves. And we know all those to be the strongest dragons in existence. So we're going to go through this article here today. Um, honestly, there's not a whole ton to divulge from this. If you wanted any kind of cool, juicy information, I'm just going to be totally upfront with you. There is not a lot that's going to come through this. If you just want to know about the lore, stick around. But if you wanted anything to know about mechanics, gameplay, play siege any of that kind of reveal unfortunately it is not in this video and you can feel free to shut it down here today i won't mind i'll be a little upset but i will totally understand nonetheless but before you do please don't forget to comment like and or subscribe i can't tell you how much those things help me out a ton and if you have not yet pre-ordered total war warhammer 3 you can feel free to do so using the nexus link in my description and pin comment uh, nexus gets you a steam key directly from the developer and is a great way to support the channel let's dive on in here on the lore of Miao Ying. And this they did a really cool format here where they did a Q&A with Andy Hall. Now, of course, I have a picture here. I don't have the actual article. They've sent us this ahead of time uh, so I can dive on into this. So if you don't know who Andy Hall is, he is an individual. He's the lead writer for Warhammer Projects. Now, why that's important is he's the individual who has written lore upon lore upon edition upon edition for Warhammer Fantasy already. So this isn't Creative Assembly writing the lore for Cathay in the way that they want to. They are partnering with Games Workshop, as we've already seen, and they already have their lead writer, a ex uh, colleague, or, or I'm sorry, ex-employee of Games Workshop. And the other one would be Josh Reynolds, who is um, also an ex-colleague of uh, Andy Hall's. So the people writing the lore for Cathay have written the lore for, you know, all of the races up to this point ad nauseum. So they kind of, you get that same sense of the characters getting into it, which is very fun, right? And the initial question here is kind of like talking about Grand Cathay. We've never gone into this before. What can you kind of tell us? And he says, you know, this is essentially matches the same blueprint of 8th edition races. And it, I think this is a really cool paragraph right here. The team at GW tapped into the design ethos of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, which has been to take archetypes, both historical and mythic, then twist and push them to the extremes. This has given us a deep roster to play with, with plenty of potential areas for expansion. And that's really cool here, right? Because we see that spread across so many of the other races and factions of Warhammer, right? Uh, you can draw a lot of um, historical parallels when you look at stuff like the Old World, or Tilia and Astalia, when you look at the actual shape of the map of the Warhammer world and how it matches our own. Um, and it's really cool. So it's cool to see like, hey, yeah, obviously that is implied that we do that, but it's cool to just see the actual written word of, yeah, that's how we do things. So it's cool to see that. And it'll be interesting to see how they take a lot of really um, compelling Eastern mythology and jam it into the Warhammer formula. And we're kind of seeing that right now with the dragon. So here's another cool bit here too. But from a purely player perspective, whether it's in Total War or on the tabletop, I think the real innovation is the dragons. That they can transform into both draconic and human aspects and each form gives players myriad tactical options in battle. That is exciting. And that's something that we've kind of speculated on in previous videos. How is Meow going to come... <laughs> <laughs> meow. How, how are the Celestial Dragon Emperor's children going to come into the game as far as their forms? Uh, will the human form be the caster? Will the draconic form be the combatant? How is that going to play out? Will the draconic form only have access to like breath attacks and other bound abilities? And you know, are, do they have the ability to switch back and forth? Or is there a bit of a cooldown? So those things kind of come into the equation and the question when you look at these dual aspects and forms. And it is interesting too where or not Total War, but Warhammer does not have 
uh, dragons that shapeshift, right? But that has become a very big staple of Forgotten Realms. And the dragons of the Warhammer world are not naive or stupid or, or just, you know, lizard beasts like they are in some fantasy settings. They are very intelligent. Obviously, they can communicate with uh, certain races. The older ones, at least, can communicate like telepathically, so it seems, especially when it comes to being sung to by the elves. And that's just kind of a weird thing in, in and of itself. But you do have a very intelligent race that has been there for a long time. And uh, it is interesting that they do not have any kind of shape-shifting capability like they do in other fantasy lore. So it's kind of interesting to see they brought that in with the Celestial Dragon Emperor and his children to make them feel different from the Western quote-unquote dragons like the Star Dragon, Moon Dragon, Sun Dragon, Chaos, Black, so on and so forth. But um, we here get a little bit of information here about Miao Ying, and I'm going to cover this in the video tomorrow because a lot was done with the GW uh, article. But here's a cool little bit here. As a cool... As cool a tactician and powerful a magic user as any high elf, but able to go toe to toe with a greater demon in dragon form. So we know star dragons to be extremely powerful, and we've read from the article that um, the that Miao Ying herself is the strongest dragon alive. Uh, I guess obviously outside of the celestial dragon emperor. But what I said in that article too was ignore that line of text because every single army book is built with that kind of internal propaganda, right? Like, Tyrion, the best swordsman to have ever existed. So says the Empire, too, when it's talking about their best swordsman. So says the Chaos and the Dark Elves and all the other races. So take any time they, they kind of give you a power, power scale as it relates to a sentence that says the most powerful blank of all time. It's just kind of that internal army book's uh, propaganda kind of drumming itself up, which I think kind of is cool. It, it creates that that sort of... Uh, that it's kind of why pe dwarf players and high elf players have like an animosity towards one another because you've read the books, you understand that side of that faction, and you side with it. So it's kind of an interesting little ditty there. So looking at her power scale from this sentence here, it's pretty interesting to see that she is an extremely powerful caster and she is a uh, dragon on par with a star dragon because in the lore for star dragons, it says they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with greater demons, uh, not unlike uh, a Narian's dragon who can just outright kill multiple greater demons and then die. But, you know, neither here nor there. So this is the character as it's seen. And I really like the design motifs on the character because that crown is actually on the dragon, which I did not realize until I really kind of looked at it side by side, which is really cool. You get some really cool stuff with like the, the dragon skill gauntlet she's kind of got going on. And we get a lot of really cool motifs as well with her brother, which we haven't seen um, outside of that single screenshot of the, uh, the white dragon. But what makes your character so compelling? And I think this is kind of interesting here. Andy's talking about how of all the characters in the setting, she is a little bit more relatable because her conflict comes from conflict with her family and less of like conflict with, ah, oh, yes, the unbeatable Archeon to the north, which you can't really relate to, right? Like, yeah, you know, I, oftentimes do I fight a, a, a gigantic surge of chaos twisted demons from the north in my day-to-day -day life. But he's kind of saying, you know, powerful, aloof, celestial dragons or celestial dragon beings could also easily fall into the same category, but the familial angle gives us a way in. She is the eldest daughter trying to prove her worth to her father against jealous siblings. That's a very human scenario and one we can leverage and understand, especially for me as a father with a very determined older daughter. So uh, a little bit more of a human touch to uh, Miao Ying, which is, I think, pretty cool. But in the same time, though, I'm I'm playing a fantasy game, so if I can't relate to the character, I don't necessarily mind. <laughs> but one of the titles you gave uh, about stands out. Ru -ru 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 one of the titles you gave above stands out. Matriarch of Nan Gao. Can you elaborate? So this is a cool little ditty because he's saying, you know, she rules the city of smoke. Although the lords of Nan Gao are perhaps not as deterrent or deferent to a dragon as the ruling classes in other cities. This is because the city is home to countless forges and workshops, that's important, that furnish the armies of the empire with weapons and provide countless war machines for the defense of the Great Bastion. And why that's important is that this gives credence to Matthias Ellison's um, 8th edition 
fan-made army book that he did for Cathay. He did one for Araby, he did one for the Amazons. Matthias Ellison is one of those names that if you played 8th edition and you just kind of saw his army books floating around, uh, you're like, man, this is like a really well done army book. And he was one of the individuals who envisioned a lot of the armies that a lot of people request into these 8th edition army books in a really awesome way. And in his army book, he calls Nan Gao, and here's the, the little lore blurb for it, Nangao is also the greatest foundry in Cathay. Thousands of weapons and armor are made here every day for the never-ending army of the Celestial Dragon Emperor. Hundreds of cannons and bolt throwers are forged here, and the most famous of Cathayan engineers and alchemists dwell in Nangao, always seeking to improve the seeking to improve the creations of the Imperial War Machine. So it's cool here, right, that we get this fan-made project in Matthias Ellison's Cathay getting a little bit of a nod here, a little bit of a canonization in the way that he envisioned Nangao. And I think that's a really cool little touch. It's nothing huge. It's nothing sweeping. If you, if you, you would not even know that thing existed if you do not know or have not read Matthias Ellison's, um, Eli Eliasson's, um, Cathay 8th edition book. So it's a really cool little nod there. But our last question here is, how does she compare to her brother in arms and blood, Zhao Ming, our other legendary lord? So her vaulted position as the commander of the Great Bastion means she is, perhaps correctly, perceived as the favorite of the other dragons. Again, other dragons. So we get more of a hint towards the siblings and, and who they are, what they might be. But the, dra the storm dragon doesn't help matters by lording her position over her siblings. When they meet, she often stands apart. Zhao Ming, her younger brother, is a far more gregarious character and gets especially offended by Ying's aloofness. So in our video tomorrow, we're going to go into who I think the other, or at least the the allegiance and how the other two siblings might come into this role because we have the Storm Dragon of the North and we have the uh, the Iron Dragon, the, the White Iron Dragon of the West. And those colors do mean something. Storm, she has black in her, that's kind of like her, her primary color palette is black. So we'll take a look at that in the video tomorrow where we talk about Games Workshop's article and that will be our final video for uh, Cathay lore for this week. It looks like we'll be getting another drop for Zhao Ming sometime next week. Again, though, we're coming up on the end of the month, and I'm really eager to find out more about those siege mechanics that they teased back in July. They did say that we would hopefully be getting that here in September, so I am looking out for that. I thought we would be getting info on the early adopter bonus here in September, but I reread the post in July, and it says shortly after that, we will have info on, on the early adopter bonus. Bonus, So not to be confused with the word boner, which I almost just said, and I did just say right there. So don't demonetize me, YouTube. But that is our video here for today, guys. Not a ton of information, but a lot of really uh, nifty little tidbits here as it pertains to the lore of Cathay. We'll be back tomorrow with another bit of info, mainly talking about some speculation over the other siblings of the Cathay and Legendary Lords. But tune in a little bit later for the lore Q&A. You can go ahead and ask any questions you might want on the community post that I've made before the stream starts. Um, I'm just gonna pretty much be reading through those questions and answering people and then answering from the, uh, the audience as is. But feel free to stop in, have some fun. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.